When people hear that the Omnipod 5 is a closed loop system, meaning that it talks to your Dexcom G6 and adjusts the amount of insulin that it gives you automatically, sometimes they think that it's a completely hands-off system and that it's going to fix highs for you automatically and there's not going to be that much thought that has to go into it. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video that talks about that fact and really the three main ways that, that I go about actually fixing highs and how some of that stuff is different and, and what you can kind of look out for on your graphs to decide on which method to use. So I'm going to uh, share a couple of my Dexcom clarity reports uh, just for a couple of different days that show some examples of these things. And I want to try to help out everybody that maybe is, is looking at this with a, a little bit of concern and not being sure what to do. Uh, so again, so I think when I first started on the, the Dexcom I or the, the Omnipod 5, I assumed that when my blood sugar went high, that the Omnipod would give me the appropriate dose to bring it back to normal relatively quickly. <clears throat> what I've seen in practice um, is that if I do go high, let's say I miss a, a mealtime bolus and I, I just end up staying high after a meal, uh, the system will use those micro adjustments to try to give me additional insulin, but it's go, it's coming in such small doses that I'm actually just going to kind of stay high for a long time. So what I've noticed is that the, the Omnipod really seems to like stability. So let's say that I come up to a certain range, let's say it's 180 and I'm kind of going along like this. I'm too high, but the system is, is kind of happy that I'm stable. So it's going to keep giving me, um, insulin doses on, on like the 0.5 or 0.1 or whatever it is that it'll give me in the background, but it's really not going to bring the blood sugar down quickly. It'll come down after many hours, but if you're looking at a daily report and you're worried about your average blood glucose, which when you kind of expand that out, it turns into your A1C, you're going to end up with a lot of time on a given day spent higher than you would like. Uh, so if you're kind of waiting on those automatic adjustments, you might be disappointed in the results. And so I just wanted to kind of talk about that and how the system seems to, to work best for me. So let me find a couple of uh, examples of this. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Okay. So the first ex uh, graph that I wanna show is an extended high. So I just took screenshots of these. Hopefully this is big enough, but I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so this area where I have my cursor, you can hopefully see the little plus sign on the left. Uh, this is an ex what I would call an extended high. So you can see it's 12 a.m. right here. I'm at about like the 160 range and I come up to 170 or so, I hit 180, and then I kind of just stay at 180 for a long period of time. Now, eventually I have a nice smooth descent and I come down and then I go about my day. But this was an example where I actually didn't wake up and give myself a manual correction. So I tried to rely on the Omnipod 5 doing the automated adjustments in the background. And you can see that it's 12 a.m. to really 6 a.m. was quite a lot higher than I wanted. So that's six hours of being out of the range that I would like because I was relying on that sort of extended or the, uh, the background basal adjustments to Bring my blood sugar down so helpful but not ideal and it's not the quickest fix so that's really the extended high and that's kind of what i see a lot if i do miss a bolus and i rely on the automated adjustments to to fix it it's gonna it's gonna fix but it's just gonna take a while so that's something to look out for if you see that on the graph <clears throat> now i wanted to show an alternative which was uh i guess it was a couple weeks ago so here you can see 12 a.m., same thing is happening. I'm going up higher than I would like to. I'm actually in like the, I think it's the 200 tier, which is why you see this little alert. Now, in this case, you see a much faster descent. You see it come down much quicker than it did in the last, in the last screenshot. And that is because at this time, I remember this one, I woke up at about, I think it was like right when it got to the very highest. And I gave myself a manual correction. So I used the smart bowls calculator um, to actually give me a correction, which again, to take a step back, the system will, will know 
based on your insulin to carb ratios and your correction factors, how much insulin you would need to correct a high blood sugar more quickly, but it's not going to do that automatically. So you have to actually go onto the PDM, put in or press the actual bolus calculator, uh, have it read your CGM, and then it's going to give you an estimated correction dose. And if you want to take that, you can, but that's not going to happen automatically. So this is an example of I opened up the PDM. I looked at the, the correction that was needed. I took it and you can see I came down much quicker. Now, the cool thing about the Omnipod 5 is that <clears throat> the fact that it adjusts the amount of, of uh, basal insulin that you get, uh, it, it, you know, this might have been uh, actually a crash downward if I was on MDI, because a lot of times if I take a relatively large dose, especially at night, once it starts moving, the momentum is just going to keep pulling it and pulling it, pulling it down. So this is a great example of it was high. I did a manual correction. It came down, but then you can see that it smoothed out. Because again, the Omnipod likes these sort of straight lines. The algorithm does. And so it knew once it was coming down at a certain rate to stop giving me those background adjustments that it had been over here. And now I'm nice and smooth. So an example of, in this case, I really wanted to give myself a, a correction. And then I ended up in a nice, good range. Another one I wanted to show <clears throat> was exercise. So exercise is another way to correct a high blood sugar, as most people are aware. But I wanted to show what that sometimes looks like on a graph. <clears throat> so in this example, this is 6 PM. This is normally when I go to the gym. And I purposely make my blood sugar a little bit higher so that I'm in a, a nice, good range. And I'm taking glucose tablets as I, as I need to when I work out. I believe that like I got up to the 180 mark here. This was when I started my cardio. So I had a quick drop off Then I took a quick break and you can see how I rebounded back up. And then I did more cardio and then I really started the crash. I came down until like, I think it was like the nineties, which for me is, I don't necessarily feel comfortable in that range. So I came down very, very quickly from that hard exercise. And then you can see it rebounded quite a bit. So it came way back up and it kind of screwed up my night a little bit because then I was up higher than I wanted to be and I wasn't sure what to do with dinner. Um, the reason that it came up is that when it was coming down so fast, the Omnipod saw that the blood sugar was dropping so quickly and it totally got rid of those background basal doses that I would normally have to keep me stable. So not only was I depleting the sugar from the exercise, but then I was also not getting insulin from the system. And so when I actually came to rest, I jumped way back up. And so you can kind of ping pong here if you're not managing that correctly. So this is an example of very intense exercise and then rest and then the blood sugar kind of spiking back up. So this is not ideal either, but it does demonstrate how blood sugar can come down from exercise. Now, the last one that I wanted to show <coughs> was kind of a combination of the automated adjustments and lighter exercise. So here in this example here, you can see I'm a little bit over 180, almost at like 200, but not quite. I believe in this case, the way that I remedied this was with lower intensity exercise for not as much of a period of time. So you can see that the descent is a little bit slower and then the rebound was not quite as extreme. So instead of me coming straight down and then coming straight back up when I stopped with the exercise, it kind of came straight or came down at like more of a 45 degree angle. And then it was pretty smooth after that. So those are just a few examples. Um, so what am I trying to say here? So I view uh, the fixing of a high blood sugar when you miss a, a dose in kind of three ways. I can manage it in, in one of three ways. One would be the first thing that we talked about, which is just allowing the automated adjustments in the Omnipod 5 to correct it. So it will correct it, but it's gonna take a long time. Uh, so you're gonna end up with a higher average blood glucose for that day, and you're gonna maybe not feel so great when the blood sugar is pretty high, but it will do a nice job of bringing it down at a slow, smooth rate without the risk of crashing. So there's some pros and cons to that option. Um, the second option is to actually give yourself a manual correction using the smart bolus calculator. So that would be the second example, which I showed when I woke up in the middle of the night at 200 and I gave myself a manual correction. It came down much faster 
and then it smoothed out. Um, I will say that when you first start on the Omnipod 5, until the algorithm really gets to know you, this might not work as well for you. But once it starts to really uh, get a feel for what you need in terms of the amount of insulin, and you've got your correction factors dialed in, that does work very well. So it's a much quicker descent using the second option of giving yourself a manual correction. You do have to be careful of what else you're doing though, because if you're giving yourself a manual correction and then you go and take a walk or you do something active, you're gonna you know, exacerbate the, the effects of that correction. So you have more of a risk of going low in that case. Usually the system is excellent at cutting it off and making it a smooth descent, but it's just another consideration. So pros and cons there as well. And then the third one is the exercise. Um, so as I kind of showed in that one graph, intense exercise or particularly intense cardio is going to drop your blood sugar very fast. But then there is a result of once it comes down, spiking back up because sometimes the drop is really caused by the activity itself. And the system is seeing this in the background and it's making adjustments, meaning it's giving you less insulin. So then when you actually rest, it's going to come right back up and you're going to be stuck high for a little while, potentially. Um, the other way to manage exercise that I sort of prefer, especially when I want to actually be able to relax afterwards and, and have a nice stable blood sugar, is to do not as quite of intense exercise. So that's right where a walk might come in as opposed to going all out at the gym um, and you know really like busting it and trying to go crazy to get that blood sugar down um, or just being engaged in an intense exercise because you like it. Um, so the intense exercise is oftentimes gonna lead to a rebound, whereas the, the lighter exercise or the walk after a meal or something like that is gonna, in many cases, bring the blood sugar down a little bit more slowly. And then you can allow, you can kind of work together with the algorithm to make it a smoother transition into the, the rest of your, your day. So those are just some, some things that, that I've been kind of identifying in my own head that have been helping me. And hopefully that sort of uh, conceptualizes a few of the different ways to manage your blood sugar with Omnipod 5.